Yeah, you need to start your hair. So welcome everybody to the uh, creating a life full possibility webinar series. Today we are going to talk about assistive technology. And I like to start off uh, the webinar with a question just to get things rolling. Uh, so please put in the chat. In honor of James Earl Jones, who just passed away, uh, your favorite uh, James Earl Jones movie. Uh, mine is actually Sandlot, which is a uh, movie about uh, kids that play baseball, and he's he's in there. He's, he's awesome. So also, I will go over some uh, Zoom guidelines real quick. Uh, we do have closed captioning today, uh, live closed captioning and um, a cut, uh, live ASL interpreting. So uh, when you if you talk, please talk slowly. Um, it's for them to pick the pick the voices up. Um, also, uh, if you want to raise your hand, you can push star nine um, to to um, um, take yourself on mute. If you're on the phone, you can push star six. Um, and let's just be respectful. And uh, you know, you can use the emojis on the you know like the reaction button. On the on the Zoom window uh, to to uh, react to stuff, I kind of like that. Also, uh, the closed captioning button is at the bottom of the Zoom window as well. And with that, I will turn it over to my one of my favorite colleagues, Sarah Ruth. Come on down to the to the Zoom spot to Zoom the Zoom room. So take it away, Sarah. Awesome. Thank you for that illustrious introduction. Uh, good morning and uh, welcome. My name is Sarah Rue from the Communications Director here at the Arizona Developmental Disabilities Planning Council. Uh, we are really excited to be presenting today's webinar. It's the fourth session of a series we've been doing, um, and it is all about assistive technology. Uh, we are proud to be part of what's called the Arizona Developmental Disabilities Network. It's a group that collaborates to highlight the need for broader acceptance and inclusion of people with intellectual disabilities um, and developmental disabilities across Arizona. So uh, if this is your first time joining us for this series, it was really developed to help individuals design and prepare for a life full of possibilities. We believe every person deserves to fully participate in life rather than observe from the sidelines. That includes access to valued roles and being seen as a person rather than a disability label. So I am very excited to present uh, and introduce today's uh, presenter. Her name is Carla Rivas Parker, and she works for the Arizona Technology Access Program, also known as ASTAP. She's an assistive technology specialist over there, and she has, get this, more than 25 years of experience and a lifelong passion and advocacy work in the field of disabilities. So let me tell you a bit about Carla. She is the proud recipient of not one, but two Fulbright scholarships, which allowed her to obtain her Bachelor of Arts degree from California State University, Chico in 1990, and a master's degree in social work from our very own Arizona State University in 2000. Carla also earned a second master's degree in education and vision studies from the University of Massachusetts. She is a certified rehabilitation counselor, a certified assistive technology instructional specialist, a certified vision rehabilitation therapist, and a certified assistive technology professional. After earning her master's degree in 2000, Carla went to work for the Arizona Rehabilitation Services Administration. Some of you may be familiar with that organization. 
For the next 20 years, Carla held various positions at RSA, including counselor for people with blindness or vision impairment, statewide blindness coordinator, supervisor for a VR office in Phoenix, and manager for the Older Individuals Who Are Blind program. So please join me in welcoming Carla. We are so grateful for her expertise and insights, and we look forward to an engaging and informative discussion. And one more item I'd like to mention, at the end of the webinar, we're going to share a brief survey, um, a couple of surveys, in fact. So just please take a few moments before you log off to complete the survey and share your thoughts. Now, let's hear from Carla on assistive technology in the workplace. Welcome, Carla. Thank you very much, Sarah. I appreciate the invite to present today in this very important topic, which is the assistive technology for employment for people with IDD. So I have a lot to share today. So I'm going to dive in into the information. Um, basically, through this presentation, I'm going to be talking about the most typical function limitations people with IDD face. And number two, we're going to be addressing assistive technology that can help uh, to overcome these functional uh, limitations. So when I uh, was trying to figure out the most typical functional limitations persons with IDD face, being IDD an umbrella for different conditions, I started kind of trying to put together <clears throat> a tally of what was kind of the most common one. So the list I have here by any means represents all the functional limitations, but it does represent the most typical ones. And it's important to be aware that the functional limitations run from light or minor limitation to a significant or severe limitation. So some of the most common ones I found was, for example, the expressive and receptive communication. Um, throughout as receiving communication or in our attempt to understand what is being said to us, we have uh, also to address how to maintain attention and how to motivate people in, in this two-way communication pathway. Social interaction was pretty much something that uh, is across the board in all the conditions under the IDD. And along with that is anxiety, that kind of uh, situation when we're trying to communicate, we're trying to socialize and we can get anxiety when we can express what we wanna say or we're not understanding what people is telling us. Reading and writing is another area. It may affect in a, in, in a small degree or a deeper degree in some people. Short-term memory as well as organization and time management, I found a lot of correlationship in between those and I'll explain when I get into the areas of assistive technology, how those three ones relate. And for some people uh, that may have physical limitations, um, the mobility and the fine motor skills limitations are, uh, are a problem. In general, we all know that people with IDD and not just people with IDD, I will say people in general that has a disability, will face some sort of discrimination. People not understanding the disability, not understanding that the person with a disability has a potential. The lack of access to education is another biggie one and the difficulty performing certain tasks. And this difficulty performing certain tasks is basically related to if you have or not the proper tools for you to perform certain tasks. So um, in, it is very important to understand that a person with IDD can thrive in a net 
in a um, work setting, as long as they have four main elements for them to succeed. And those four elements are based on um, job coaching or job training, somebody that's going to be with them until they understand what is expected, until they have everything they need to do the job, that kind of stuff. The assistive technology, the person needs to do the job. Assistive technology is what I'm going to be talking in the following slides, but it's only one element out of these four. Uh, the workplace accommodations, which are really important, that the person need, has uh, what they need in order to do the essential functions of the job, and a very supportive work environment. If we have these four different uh, things, we will be able to thrive through the employment. So now let's move on into what is assistive technology. This is kind of the main topic today for me. So it is important to understand what is assistive technology. So the official definition is any item, piece of equipment or product system that is used to increase, maintain or improve the capabilities of an individual with disabilities. So, that's the official definition. In my book, because I am a person with a disability, for those of you that may know or not, I am totally blind. And I am a firm believer of assistive technology simply because without my assistive technology, I probably wouldn't be able to do this presentation today. So in my book, assistive technology is anything I can get my hands on that's going to help me to be more productive or to perform a task that without that little piece of equipment, I won't be able to do it. I divide technology into three areas, low tech, medium tech, and high tech. So low tech is anything that's uh, as simple as does not require any installation, does not require any configuration, and there is really not much a high learning curve to operate that. So for example, a scotch tape, people will say scotch tape is not assistive technology, it can be. If I can use that piece of scotch tape to make something accessible to me, and that will make a difference for me, it is assistive technology. We're gonna talk about, for example, a piece of paper with list of tasks that is just a list in the book of many people, but it is simple, but it is assistive technology when it is used to overcome a difficulty we are having. High technology is the technology that may require installation, it may require configuration, it may require the use of power like electricity or, or, or a battery, and it may require a higher learning curve to operate it. And mid-tech is anything in between. So what is important about the technology is that Assistive technology will help any individual to overcome any barriers of employment or activities of daily living. It will improve productivity. And if I am more productive, I am more satisfied in the work I am doing. It will improve my, my participation. Maybe without the equipment that I need to be able to do my job, I won't even be able to participate, express my ideas, express what I think should be different. And the employers, of course, will benefit from having better production and less expenditures in ongoing training. Okay. Considerations when we're talking about assistive technology. Assistive technology needs to be individualized. The fact that I have two employees with the same condition, with the same functional limitation, does not mean the same item is gonna work for them. You have to have an individualized assessment because no one size fits all. So when you individualize the assessment, you get to learn not just what the limitations are, 
what the tasks they want to perform is, but also you're going to learn about what all their abilities they have, what is their likes and their dislikes, and that's what's going to make that particular piece of technology the proper technology for the person, and we will use the match approach where the features of the device will match the needs of the person, the tasks that they have to perform, uh, and their potential. It is important, important that the devices are also somewhat portable so the person can take back and forth between different areas at the work site, or they can take it even back and forth between home and work. It has to be durable. I don't need a piece of technology that lasts two months and in two months I am out of it and I'm not able to do my job. So it has to be something that I can account and I de can depend on it. And it has to be easy to manage. And, and it may be high technology that will require a higher learning curve, but once you learn it, you learn step one, two, three, boom, that's easy access. And that's what we need to have into consideration when we're talking about assistive technology. Okay, so diving into different the different limitations. So the first one is expressive communication. So here I will address the three uh, different ones, the, the low tech, the medium tech, and the high tech when it comes for the person to be able to express what they want. This is very important. So for low tech, we have a picture-based system. What is this? Well, just think about a photo album, a, 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 some uh, pictures that will represent a topic. For example, breakfast. We're going to have some choices there, milk, we're going to have coffee, eggs, bread, cereal, and we're going to ask the person, hey, what would you like to eat? The person is going to point at the picture, and that is how they're going to express what they want. I'm not going to make the decision for them, but I'm giving them the opportunity in a simple assistive technology what they want. So we, we can have different topics on feelings, for example, how do they feel today? Do they have pain? They feel happy, they feel worried, they feel concerned. What is it that they're feeling? We can have a list of places, places that they wanna go. They wanna go to a restaurant, they wanna go to the park. What is it that they wanna do? So you just have a photo album with different pages and that will be a very simple, no battery require, require no configuration, no installation, and very efficient. So next one, digitized devices. This is a mid technology. Yeah, it will require some sort of batteries. This is, I have an example here of a uh, communication device called the Gotec 9. So it has nine buttons. So what this device does is that you can designate each button for a specific phrase. We can say, for example, button number one is for me to say yes. For button number two, we'll say no. Button number three may say something, I am hungry. So what you do here is you're going to place still a picture to signify what you want to say in the message, and you will record with, with uh, your voice the message. So when the person pushes the button, it's your voice that's coming up on that recording. And so it's easier to use. It doesn't really require that kind of high level of uh, learning. And it's an efficient way to be able to express via audio what you want or how you feel. Let's move on to the next one. Here we have a... Um... Okay, give me... I think I went somewhere else. Give me a second. Let's see. Okay. I don't know if I was in the right one. Was I in the right one? I don't know why it's jumping to a total different uh um Thank you. 
I see the contact when when I move to the next slide, it seems like it's jumping farther away. Do you guys see that? Or it's just on my end? I think it's just on uh, your end. Your end. Um, so when I am in this slide, it says list. List, and it should be a digital device um, for communication. And I don't know what happens here. Give me a second. The next one is alarm alerts. Um, I'm sorry, uh, I I don't know what happens here. I, I lost some. So in the expressive communication, basically the high technology, and it's not showing here, um, we're talking about advanced technology that will have basically like a tablet or a computer is going to be like more interactive where the person is able to select words or select pictures and generate a speech based on that, uh, on that uh, um, selection of uh, options. I am feeling very dysfunctional right now because it's really not in the sequence I wanna do this presentation. Um, when we are talking about lists here that jump, uh, digital devices, that is okay. Okay. So here, um, it was, this is jumping into what I call the organization, uh, assistive technology to do, to be able to organize and prioritize what we need to do. That's when I was talking about uh, with a low uh, technology, a list of items can be very important simply because we have the list of things that need to be um, achieved throughout the day. And as you mark them that you completed that, then you have that sense of uh, achievement. So you have complete something. So this helps not, not, not just on organizing your task and prioritizing them, but if you have memory problems as well, and if you don't remember if you did something, here will be a very good way for you to register what you had done and mark them as, as you complete. So that is the importance of this low technology. Um, Alarms and alerts, this is more related with time, time management and when we are to basically complete uh, certain tasks at certain periods, we can put reminders that we can alert us what is that we need to do next. We have uh, the technology now is so evolving that we have even a smart speakers that we verbally can say, hey, remind me at so-and-so time, get ready for my meeting. So you can coordinate your calendar with your reminders. Um, okay, moving to the next slide. The structure and routine is very important. Uh, when we are organizing activities, because this will uh, help us uh, to know what to do. So for example, I will say every morning uh, from nine to 11, I'm gonna be returning phone calls. I'm gonna be replying to emails, that kind of thing. Or I can say, for example, the first Wednesday of the month, I will be paying my bills. Uh, or every Saturday I'm gonna go shopping. So these are routines that when the person does them, it's very crucial. They know what to expect and how to handle those things. Now it's jumping for, okay, now a jump into the mobility technology, people that may have limitations getting around when this is the case, people with uh, physical limitations may benefit from the use of wheelchair, power wheelchairs. Um, what is important at the workplace is that you have adjustable desks because the chairs may have a very incisive, but when you are to, um, to work on a desk, you have to be able not just to elevate, 
or or lower it, but you also have to tilt it. And the position of the items on the desk is very crucial as well for easier reach. Grab bars, for example, in the bathrooms is important, gives a sense of independence. So when you you are in the in the workplace and uh, you know, crutches or walkers, it's very important. And it's important to have a special place if we're using a walker or crutches so the devices are not really on the way of other people. For fine dexterity, people that may have limitation grasping, it is different types of technology here that are in the list. Sometimes people are not able to grasp properly like a pen or a pencil or stylus. So you have grips that can assist you in doing that. If you have not much movement or limitation in the movement of your hands, uh, you will be able to use like a mouse stick or you can use an adapted switch for your devices to be able to operate instead of a joystick or instead of a, 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 of a regular mouse kind of thing. Or some, sometimes even dictation. If your hands are absolutely not uh, uh, able to utilize a regular keyboard, uh, then uh, probably uh, inputting with your uh, voice will be a, a solution. Or if you are able only to use one hand because your other hand is weak, maybe a one-handed keyboard may be a solution. So we have different types of technology that can assist in this um, fine dexterity. And I don't know, this presentation is showing only 15, but my presentation honestly had like 30, 33 uh, items. And I don't wanna stop here and not talk about those. Is it possible, uh, Mike, for you to launch the presentation there and see if we can address the other slides that were just not showing on my end here? Yes, we can do that. Yeah, because there were several there. So how do I stop sharing? I'll S here. Did I stop sharing here? Are you there? Jason, can you load? the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, give me one second. Um, I'm here though. Okay, thank you. Uh, you can go through questions if there's any questions at this point. I'll have a question while they work that out. This is Sarah. What are some ways that you recommend people speak to employers or, you know, a business owner about using some of these items on behalf of someone who needs them? You know, what are some common things that you've heard that come up? Um, you know, how does that conversation um, go um, in a smooth manner? Like, do you have any tips for that? Yeah, when the person uses assistive technology, first of all, they really need to be good in using it. So even during interviews, I'm, I'm one of the people that take my technology with me. And at, at an interview, I'm taking notes and I am uh, doing things on my technology. So they see I am capable to manipulate a computer. And then I can say, yeah, I I am blind and I use this assistive technology and that's what I will need in order to be able to do my job. Thank you. Yeah, that's a great tip. I'm looking at the... The, 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 the presentation I sent you, Mike, has only 15 slides or it has more?
Nope, looks like there's more. Jason's loading it right now. Okay. Yeah. Okay, let me. Thank you for your patience, everybody. I don't know where it broke it. I'm so sorry about that. Did everybody see that? But we're going to cover it. <clears throat> Talking about yes. assistive technology, as you can see, it's not always <laughs> great. So, But we have to be able to overcome it. And that's the most important. Yeah, so we're on slide, uh, slide 16 now. Um, when in social settings is what it says. So. Is that good? Jason, right. is it possible to bring up the presentation in presenter mode? Yeah, if you can 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 run it from me there, and I'll tell you when to move to the next slide, Jason. If that's okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was trying to. Yeah, let me let me do that. Let me run it in presenter mode, and then I'll. Okay. So I would like to get to. Let's see. Okay, the assistive technology for expressive communication. That was slide 10. That's what I would like to continue from. With the speech generating devices. And you let me know when ready. Is it better? Can you guys see that now? So are you on the slide uh, 10 with the uh, speed generating devices? I'm on slide 16 where it says uh, when in social settings. So. It's supposed to say, um, I'm sorry, let me get back. Speed generating devices uh, uh, slide. Slide 10, okay. Yeah, there you go. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. So the speech generating device, as I was talking, is more interactive as where the person is able to select pictures or select words and form a whole sentence. And they just press a button that basically speaks for them. So it's more interactive. It gives is more robust and people have more opportunity to generate what their thinking is rather than just having limitation to what is available on a limited pictures, for example, or the, the pre-recording slides that we do. This is high technology. This will take a little bit higher learning curve to, to do it. So the next slide, please. Now we're moving for receptive communication. And here is where we're going to address how to maintain attention and how to retain motivation and reduce anxiety. Let's move to the next slide, please. So to maintain attention, it is very important to understand that uh, environmental sounds may be a distraction to a person. So if we can somewhat block that env environmental sound by utilizing something like a uh, FM system where a receiver 
and a transmitter. So me, the person uh, who is receiving the information will wear the receiver. The transmitter will be the person that's talking. So that information, if we use this system, will go from the voice of the person who's talking to the ears of the person that is receiving and all the environmental noise and crowdedness that sometimes distract people will be eliminated. Okay, so next slide, please. We have also noise reducing headsets where you can wear these headsets and any environment you know, sometimes the air condition makes a lot of noise. Many of us don't hear it, but people that are more sensitive to these kind of sounds, it will be annoying to them. So these kind of headsets will also help in reducing the noise around and be able to uh, pay attention for a longer time. Next slide. There are some tips here that I wrote when providing information uh, to this population. And number one is breaking the ideas in small chunks of, with um, kind of uh, small sentences that will uh, be able to process uh, easier. Use contract rather than abstract kind of um, uh, ideas. Provide sequences. When you're talking about something, if you can say, hey, A, B, C, or one, two, three, that is very important for people to be able to follow on a conversation, knowing that you're gonna, we're going to talk about three items, number one, and then you name it, and that make conversation easier for the person to receive. And provide extra time. People have issues processing verbal information, processing uh, printed information and knowing that just give them a little bit more time for that process and you can assist them to complete forms just uh, write what they say never give them ideas how to answer certain areas so let's move to the next slide please maintain motivation sometimes people may be doing a really good job but they're not really sure but if you use mantras, visual aids, or even use messages, hey, you're doing a really good job. You are doing it. You're not just trying. You're amazing. Things that will make them feel valued, things that will keep them motivated, that is very, very important. And positive messages throughout the work site, that will help them to feel uh, a positive environment there. Let's move to the next slide, please. Now we're moving to social interactions. That is a um, a limitation I notice is, is crucial. A lot of people sometimes don't know how to tell people what to do or what not to do, what is appropriate, what is not appropriate. There is a lot of uh, kind of social narratives uh, online or even social cartooning that will show you what may be appropriate. We're gonna go on the bus. We all have to wear sepals. This is the way we put the sepal on and you know, show it the whole process so the person identifies, okay, so when we are in the bus, I know I have to wear my sepal. There are appropriate, appropriate ways to touch a person to get their attention. So for example, touch somebody's shoulder. Hey, excuse me, I need to get through. So that is an uh, important way to, to show how to behave or what is the best way to behave and why not, what is not appropriate and what consequences could have a non-appropriate behavior. So moving to the next slide, please. To avoid anxiety, what causes anxiety? It can be our inability to express what we want to say, our inability to process what we've been told, the frustration, I am tired, I really, I feel like a lot of energy and I want to be doing something. So fidget toys, those little things that you get in your hands, you can stretch, you can twist it, you can pull it, you can throw it on the floor. Those are important. A lot of people may think, oh, that will distract people. No. When they are having too much energy, too much anxiety, or what we call sometimes stress, these kind of things 
will help everybody, not just this population. So these are very inexpensive and very effective technology. Next is light place. Blankets, uh, uh, heavy uh, uh, weighted blankets or weighted vests. Sometimes when we feel anxious, somebody hugging us, calm us down. So this blanket has the purpose of you feeling hugged, feeling that, uh, oh, I'm safe now, I'm secure. Of course, a lot of workers or students even may not want to be wearing a blanket. Uh, that may be just for home. Well, how about a vest? A vest will make you look nice and it's just going to help you to calm down. So even in the pictures, you show a couple of kids wearing those vest, weighted vests. So next slide, please. Portable foot fidget. You know, have you noticed some, sometimes when a person is anxious and started shaking their leg and shaking their leg and start shaking the whole entire bench or <laughs> place where they are sitting? Well, this is a fidget toy for your feet. So you can kind of get that energy through that uh, kind of toy. So that is very important. Next slide, please. Become audio sedation system. So this is kind of a headset attached to like a music generator, an MP3 generating music where the person is able to select the music that calmed them down. And it's very simple as well. And when they feel anxious, they feel angry because anxious gets you angry. So this will be a good way to calm this population down. And next slide, please. Now we're moving for reading. So people that have reading limitations may not be able to uh, either read because of uh, inability to recognize the print or not able to read because everything seemed to be crowded on that screen. We have two options here. One is the text to speech where you can have a device taking or capturing a picture of what you want to read and it reads aloud for you or you can do some uh some changes some configurations where you have your font size bigger the color contrast is suiting to the person's eyes and needs more spacing between the words and elimination of anything that's no needed pictures overlapping the text things like that you remove all of that and that reading it's easier for that person. Uh, we have uh, settings that can be done on the smart devices, on the computers, or we have devices or softwares. Like Immersive Reader is one that comes with Microsoft where you can do all these changes in settings and have the screen reading. You have Kurzweil 3000 where you can use not just for reading, but also for writing, which is the next the, the next one that I'm gonna be talking about. And here I have a couple more devices, Snap and Read, Speechify. Those are applications for smartphones where they can point the phone at a document, for example, and it will read aloud to them. Or as they place their finger in certain words, it will read only that word or only that sentence. So next slide, please. Assistive technology for writing. So again, Kurzweil 3000, Immersive Reader, those are softwares where you can basically utilize what we call dictation. Many times dictation is easier, but if you still want to type, you may have, you may use like um, a word prediction where you started typing the word and you see the option and you can select that. Um, and you have these softwares that are using for typically for reading, they can be used for writing as well. And some pictures of the Kurzweil 3000 here. Next slide, please. And then we're here for short-term memory uh, supports. We have visual support. So this is very crucial. The example I have here is like a routine of uh a one day in the life of a student where we start with the shower, breakfast, then we have the bus, then we have, um, you know, the the home, and then we have like a, a toothbrush, then we have the pajamas, then we have the bed. So in, in very simple 
pictures, you're telling the person what the routine is going to be throughout the day. So this is not just about routines, but it can be about tasks that the person is performing at the workplace, where if the task takes five steps, you put five pictures showing each of those steps. If the person forget, hey, what goes after this step? They look at their pictures and those are visual aids, very simple to tell them in pictures what is next. So next slide, please. So here we were gonna move to the assistive technology for time management and, and uh, and uh, organization. And so here's where I talk about the list, the color, um, um, the color coding, sorry, the alarm and alert. So let's move to the next slide, please. So the color coding, many times we have to prioritize what we need to do. So here's a very simple way. We can have baskets, we can use envelopes, we can use folders. Red means needs to be done right away. Green means needs to be done right after you finish your priority number one. And number uh, and blue will signify other items that you need to do, but you know it, it, it may be something that we can table for next day. So that is important in color if the person is able to see color. So again, all of these are mainly some basic ideas. No one size fits all. So you really have to individualize what assistive technology you're going to uh, select for the person based on their needs. Next uh, slide, please. And here we are on the list that we talked earlier when my other kind of uh, presentation was shrinked and I don't even know why, but here uh, the list that gives them a sense of accomplishment. And the next slide will be the alarms and alerts that we talk about it. And the next slide is structure and routines that we talk about. People like routines. It's really hard when you break the routine, it makes them dysfunctional. So if that is necessary, because we have to be flexible at some, at some times, it is important that if it breaks the typical routine, that you have another routine in place that they can adapt right away. And that you have another set of visual, uh, visual uh, aids that will help them to understand what the, the change is and what the new routine is. And then there is the mobility and find dexterity. To my last one, that's question. I am open for questions now. Hi, this is Steven Sokola uh, with Vocational Rehabilitation Services in Tucson. I was wondering if uh, we can acquire um, a copy of this, this PowerPoint presentation, please. I don't have, I have no problems sharing it. And I guarantee you'll get all the slides. <laughs> Thank you. Sure. Any questions in the chat? Anybody else? Hi, this is Nelly. Um, the, it is okay if you can share your email um, or phone number for future presentations? Uh, absolutely, yes. My, my name is Carla Rivas Parker. And uh, if you want to type in the chat, Sarah or uh, Jason, my phone number is 602 728 -9530. And we are with the Arizona Technology Access Program, and that is my direct phone number. Yep, just share that in the chat. I will also share the ASTOP, um, the ASTOP website. It's full of really good resources. We'll make sure everybody has a recording. We're also going to... Um, we can send send out that pitch deck um, since Carla gave us permission. Um, give me just one moment and I will also send out the email. Carla, we did have mm -hmm. a question in the chat from Michael. If an individual 
is interviewing for a job, when should they disclose they need an accommodation? Um, it depends. It depends how invisible or visible the disability is. Okay, many of us cannot hide our 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 disability. So it will be obvious in right away, you have to say yes, and this is what helps me to do my job. That will be right at the beginning. If it's invisible limitation, um, then as long as it depends what is the job that you need to do and do you really need reasonable accommodations to perform the essential functions of the job? That's the main question. Can you perform the job without reasonable accommodations or you have to have those reasonable accommodations? So if you get a job offer, for example, and you know you have to have those accommodations to do the job, that will be at that point that I will say, yeah, thank you for the job offer. By the way, I need this following reasonable accommodations. And we as the people with the disability are the ones that need to advocate. We are the ones that know what works for us because we had received already training and had the devices that we currently use to be able to um, you know, participate in these kind of activities. Thank you so much. Yeah, it is really very individualized when, when to disclose. Well, I know we are all very grateful for the information um, you shared today. Oh, we have one other chat question. Does the employer pay for the reasonable accommodation? Typically, Yes, but it all depends what the reasonable accommodation is. Um, sometimes if it requires uh, a lot of expense to accommodate somebody, let's just give an example. The, the, the building does not have a ramp for the person to get in and therefore they will have to build up a ramp and they will have to incur expenses, that kind of stuff. Um, and, and they don't own the building, for example, that's something that will have to be coordinated. Sometimes vocational rehabilitation may assist, maybe not in building a ramp, but in purchasing equipment that may be needed. So um, the employer, there is a rule when the employer kind of may be excused from providing reasonable accommodation. And it is when, uh, um, will cause, will do harm to the business to accommodate somebody, meaning that it will be extremely expensive or it will disrupt the, even the way the business does um, the job. Other than that, typically it is expected that the reasonable accommodations are provided um, by the employer. But if there is a, also a kind of fine line between what are uh, devices that you use for both uh, independent living or activities of daily living unemployment, like a wheelchair, you use that to get around. So that's something you're expected to provide yourself. It's not expected that the employer will provide that for you. But if you need like an adjustable desk, yes, because that will allow you to be able to utilize the desk with your wheelchair. So there are things that yes, and there are things that no. So it has to be something you talk to the job coach, what may or may not have to be things that the employer provides. So Alan in the chat says, depending upon the size of the employer, they may be able to receive a federal tax credit as well. Um, he's also recommending a great service for employers um, called the Job Accommodation Network. And they actually report that the average cost of an accommodation is $600. So not a lot of money. Um, uh, we bad. do, yeah, yeah. Um, do you know if um, individuals can try out some of these assistive technology items to see if they work? 
Most of the items I mentioned today, we have them here in our, our, our uh, loan library. And yes, we can loan equipment to people for two weeks uh, for trial, for making an informed decision. And that's one of the biggest services we have. We tell people, we buy it and you try it. If it doesn't work, great. You didn't expend on something that was not going to work for you. If it works, great. We will help you figure out how to get it. So. That's amazing. I want to assure everybody who signed up for this webinar, who attended this webinar, we will be sending out these resources in an email so you can have everything in one easy place. We'll include the link to Carla's organization, ASTAP, where you can browse their library on their website to see if you or a client would like to try out some of these items. They have that available. It's an amazing service. We'll make sure to send out the recording from today's webinar. We'll make sure to send you the slide deck so you can share with your colleagues. I know a lot of people weren't able to make it today. Maybe you know somebody in your office or someone you work with who could use this information. Carla, thank you so much. We did include two links in the chat as well. Mm -hmm. And these are links to two different surveys. If you'd like to provide feedback, on today's session, we include a survey link for today's webinar. I also would like to make a small pitch for our ADDPC annual community survey. You'll find that link as, as well. Um, I have a little prop, my little flyer for the survey. We wanna make sure we're providing more webinars and more you know, videos or whatever resources the community needs. That includes you. That includes your clients. So if you have an idea about something that we should be doing, please let us know in that survey. Um, get creative. We are open to all ideas. We want to make sure we are serving the entire state of Arizona. I know a lot of you are joining from northern or southern or central Arizona. So please share your thoughts. Um, you know, we want to give a... Uh, a thank you to our uh, partners at the Arizona Developmental Disabilities Network for today's session. Um, that includes the Disability Rights Arizona nonprofit, the Institute for Human Development at Northern Arizona University, and the Sonoran Center for Excellence in Disabilities at the University of Arizona. It also includes the Arizona Association of People Supporting Employment First chapter, also known as APSI, uh, the Employment First Coalition, and of course, all of our friends at the Arizona Vocational Rehabilitation Program. I know a lot of you joined today from VR, so thank you so much. Um, last uh, call to take those surveys. We'll leave up the session for a while. Thank you, everybody. Um, that's it for today's webinar. Um, thank you for joining us. Have a beautiful rest of your day. Thank you, Carla, and all of our partners once again. Take You're care. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.